What's going on everybody? James Rotofloaters here coming at you live with a new video about blue light and how it could be damaging the cells in your eyes. Also, big shout out to the 49ers NFC champions going to the Super Bowl number 54. Very excited about that. I'll go ahead and give you all a very off topic prediction real quick. 49ers are winning the Super Bowl this year. Anyways, back on track here. So blue light is something that comes from the cell phones that we use, tablets, computer screens, and things like that. I found a very interesting article that I want to share with you all. So let's go ahead and dive into the article starting now. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I make videos iFloater related news and research things of that sort you know giving you tips and tricks on how to cope with the eye floaters doing my due to you all thank you for those who have already subscribed and also make sure you follow me on instagram and spotify um, i got a podcast pretty much all of my videos that i do on here i put into audio form and put in my podcast anyways let's get started how blue light could damage cells in your eyes during daylight, blue wavelengths of light can be beneficial, playing an important role in setting circadian rhythms, boosting attention and mood, but we didn't evolve to be exposed to as much light as we are. In addition to ample blue light and sunlight, most of the light we are exposed to via digital devices are also blue. For example, the most common type of LED used in electronic devices is a white LED light, which actually has a peak emission in the blue wavelength of 400 to 490 nanometers. Moreover, the eye's cornea and lens are unable to block or reflect blue light. Increasing evidence suggests that blue light has a dark side. Something that I've been saying for a long time and I'm glad I found this article because a lot of other articles that are drawn up by uh, doctors and things of that sort, they none of them confirm that blue light is harming our eyes, but I'm pretty sure that in the coming years with people as young as us and well, you know, some of you might be in your 50s, 60s or, uh, you know, in the age where people normally get eye floaters, but myself. I'm not that old yet, and a lot of the people subscribe to this channel, they're only like, I don't know, they're younger, they're much younger, but I've met people, you know, as young as, uh, you know, 18, 19 that are experiencing eye floaters, and that's pretty young to be getting that. Anyways, I'm back on track here. At night, it can suppress the secretion of the melatonin and wreak havoc in our circadian rhythms, and recent studies have shown that extended exposure to blue light can damage the retina. Though exactly how it does, this has not been clear. Now, new research from the University of Toledo demonstrates that when blue light hits a molecule called retinol, it triggers a, ca a cascade of chemical reactions that can be toxic, toxic, ugh, toxic to cells in the retina of the eye. It's a bit paradoxical because we actually need retinol, which is a form of vitamin A in form which is a form of vitamin A in order to see in the first place. And right here they display like a close-up version of the retinols and it explains more here. There are two types of photoreceptor cells in the retina responsible for detecting light, rods and cones. Rods make up the majority and they rely on a protein called rhodopsin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Somebody correct me in the comments if I've pronounced it wrong. In order to detect light, the molecule retinol, which is able to absorb light, sits in its own specialized spot with the rhodopsin protein. When photons of light hit the retinol, it changes shape ever so slightly. It's like a small twist, really, but because there's not much room, it nudges part of the rhodopsin out of the way. This slight physical readjustment sets a progression of chemical changes that ultimately result in signals being sent along the optical nerve in the brain. You need a continuous supply of retinal molecules if you want to see. All right, let's 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 just listen to that part right there. You need a continuous supply of retinal molecules if you want to see. All right, let's continue. This is what Ajith, I don't know how to say that last name. We'll just say Karuchi. 
Ajit Karuchi of the University of Toledo, who led the current study. Photoreceptors are useless without retinal, mm. which is produced in the eye. However, Karuchi and his colleagues discovered that when HeLa cells, which were used to substitute the photoreceptor cells, were exposed to blue light in the presence of retinal, this triggers a distortion in an important protein in the cell membrane. This was followed by an increase in both oxidative damage and calcium levels in the cells. It, it's toxic, says Kasun Rat, we'll just call him Kasun Rat, a PhD student who was also involved in the study. He says the findings suggest that if you shine blue light on retinal, the retinal kills photoreceptor cells as the signaling, signaling molecule of the membrane dissolves. What do you all think about that? Photoreceptor cells do not regenerate in the eye, he adds. When they're dead, they're dead for good. Sheesh. If retinal was absent when the HeLa cells were exposed to blue light, then no toxicity was observed. Moreover, retinal-associated toxicity did not occur when the researchers use other wavelengths of light, such as red, yellow, or green. Given all of the blue light we're exposed to, Karuchi wanted to know why our vision doesn't degrade more rapidly than it does. He and his colleagues found that when an antioxidant molecule called alpha tocopherol is present, which is a form of vitamin E, it reduces the damage caused by blue light and retinal and prevents cells from dying. Unfortunately, as we age, vitamin E levels dwindle and we lose this protection. The researchers suggest that progressive destruction of light detecting cells in the eyes due to prolonged exposure to blue light could therefore contribute to age-related macular degeneration, which is leading cause of blindness. Every year, more than 2 million new cases of age-related macular degeneration are reported. That dog would start barking right now. Listen, let me just tell you all something totally off subject. The dog and the behind house neighbors or whatever you want to call it, they keep their dogs out all day, even in the cold. And I'm going to have to call animal control on these people or something. I don't know. I'm just saying that dog keeps on barking in my videos. Anyways, and I think I think it's a hyena, to be honest. I don't think it's really a dog. I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to show you all. Anyways, ah, let's get back on track here. It's no secret that blue light harms our vision by damaging the eye's retina. Our experiments explain how this happens, and we hope this leads to therapies that slow macular degeneration, such as new kind of eye drops, he adds. By learning more about the mechanic of blindness in search of method to intercept toxic reactions caused by the combination of, of retinal and blue light, we hope to find a way to protect the vision of children growing up in the high-tech world. And that's something that I like because I really truly believe that uh, people like us with eye problems, this is like a newer generation type of thing. You see what I'm saying? I believe that all of this technology that we're using and the blue light that's coming from it is, is really deterior, deteriorating our eyes and the photoreceptors aren't getting the right proteins and things of that sort. And that's also why I think the bromelain is helping out with my eyes and a lot of people that are trying the bromelain as well. Just kind of as a side note here. The study provides a potential mechanism for the proposed link between blue light exposure and macular degeneration. However, Sunir Garg, MD, a clinical spokesperson for the American Academy of Ophthalmology, cautions that the current study does not show that the intensity and duration of blue light we are typically exposed to via digital devices cause, cause age-related macular degeneration. Indeed, further research is needed to demonstrate that the current findings are also translate to photoreceptor cells where different biochemical pathways responsible for transporting retinal may change how susceptible the cells are to the damage so basically what i feel like that is saying is that yes doctors are aware of this but perhaps they got to do multiple tests to confirm it before they say that this is an official thing affecting our eyes but i think the proof is in the pudding people i'm 
I'm thinking that the blue light that we're exposed to each and every day is harming our eyes, making our eyes uh, deteriorate more and possibly causing macular degeneration, which then is leading to eye floaters. Things that we could do to help us um, from the blue light, because I do know that a lot of us have to use cell phones, computers and things like that. We're not cave people. Obviously, we're going to be using technology from the years going on. And, you know, I don't want to have super crazy problems with my eyes. And I know all of you don't want to have that as well. There's actually blue light tint that you can get on your glasses. Um, if you don't have glasses, maybe look into getting glasses whenever you're using these devices when you're when you're driving or whatever the case is. But uh, you can get it when you go and get your glasses. Literally, it's called blue light tint and it helps deflect some of the blue light that we're getting from the devices. Anyways, y'all, uh, this that's the article right there. Thank you for joining me. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this article and if you think that blue light is harming our eyes. Anyways, y'all, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining, and I'll see you next video. I'm out.